everybody this is Tina with Rehatch Designs and I just thought I'd do a little craft with me um, nothing new I was doing some little golden books and I thought what I would do is go ahead and finish um, the two that I'm doing I had done a, uh, another one not too long ago and I did a video on it how I do it in my process but I'm finishing these two, getting the papers and that type of thing. And I thought, well, you know, I have a lot of people, even though I did the video, asking me questions. So I thought, you know, it's not really a tutorial. It's just kind of a craft along with me. If you guys just want to watch me go through the process again, um, there is a video out there on how I do mine. Um, I do my covers a little bit different. I what I do is I do not um, let's see if I have a little golden book out close but yeah here I do um, a lot of times um, people will cut this part off of the cover and so this is really like your spine because it bends right there okay and um, I don't do that. I actually just take it apart and I use this portion right here. And what that allows me to do, if you look at how a little golden book is made, uh, the page goes all the way back. Okay, so if you cut it right here, then that means you're going to have to cut your page off by that much or you're going to have to fold your pages. And I don't do that. I, um, I do it in a way to where you uh, keep your pages intact um, and I actually think it's easier in the long run but anyway um, what I do I basically I put some um, string or yarn or what you know it has to be like a cotton so it absorbs glue and I just put glue in that little um, little uh, indentation right there and then I put the uh, yarn or the uh, string or whatever and put that in there and then I put a piece of um, cardstock over it about maybe three quarters of an inch and I cover that and that you know this is after I've taken it apart of course and taken the pages out um, so then anyway what that does is that makes the cover stiff and I then just use it like I would um, any other type of cover so anyway there is a video out there and I will link it if you haven't seen that and so what that does is as you can see and then I put my material over it like um, people do and that's it I add my additional spine uh, this one I added a two inch spine and then this one I usually always add a two inch spine so I have a two inch spine on this one and this one so I'm doing these two. Um, I've already, you know, done this portion of it. And now I'm just going to um, cut my papers. I picked out some papers. Um, and now I'm going to just cut them, get them ready to put in. And um, that's pretty much all I'm going to do. So if you want to, you know, move forward <laughs> and then wait till see the end. I don't know that I'll get these both done. Um, I'll probably just get the papers cut and ready to go in and that's probably all I'm going to get to and then I'll have a part two but um, you know you can just craft along with me or or not okay so anyway that's what I'm doing so I thought I would do that right now I'm getting ready to um, make some envelopes I usually I have kind of a system in place when I do my papers um, these are kind of a lightweight, um, lightweight, uh, scrapbook paper. And when I have those, I'll use them inside, uh, the signatures. And I picked out four, four different ones for this. So, and then I picked out two more, got a total of six. And these two are going to end up being envelopes that I make that I put um, in the middle of my two signatures. And I make it two signatures. And what I do is I'll pick out the papers that I'm going to use. And I haven't cut any of these down yet. So then I, I get all those ready to go. Then I take the miscellaneous things, like if I'm going to put any kind of card in there, 
or doilies or if I'm going to put bags or envelopes or anything like that I have it all ready to go for each book and that way I just cut them all um, similar papers at similar times because I think I told you guys whenever I do like little golden books I usually do and I've done a total of this time five of them so these are my last two that I need to finish I wasn't going to finish them see I get burnt out on them so every once in a while I'm like eh, well but I thought I'm going to go ahead and finish them because I think I'm going to on my giveaway Friday I'm going to go ahead and probably give one away so anyway let me see what I got here so um I need what am I doing I think I want to do um, I'm going to do the nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. I'm going to make a five by six and a half um, uh, envelope because that's like a pretty good size. It's not too big, not too small. But I have to cut my paper down to nine and a quarter and nine and a quarter. And this is what I was going to say is that I cut the papers that I need. Like I know I'm going to do a total of four for two books. I've got two of my papers here. Let me get two more out. I've got them sitting on top of my little stack over here. So I'll just make all four of my envelopes at one time. And if you're uh, making a series of these, like if you decide you want to do Christmas ones or whatever, and the I mean, I got to this because I literally made 25 little golden books at Christmas time, and it, I had to do an assembly line. I'll never do that again. It was just overwhelming. Okay, and plus I got really burnt out. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to do these. What did we decide? Um, nine and a quarter and nine and a quarter. And whenever I am cutting papers, matter of fact, I'm going to take this off of here because I don't need it right now. And um, whenever I'm cutting papers, I love using this because um, it has this little uh, lock bar system here. Plus, you can cut more than one at a time. And it just, I don't know, I just love it for, for repetitive cutting. You know, because then I, whatever papers I'm doing, I just do one after the other. Like, okay, so here I'm on nine and a quarter, and I've locked it in. So I'm going to do that, and I've got to do it the other way, nine and a quarter. So, and I always save your off cuts, because we will use those later. Make sure it's nice and straight, which it's not. Okay. I'm telling you, that's what I love about this. And it cuts great. So, okay, so there's my papers for two of my envelopes. And now I'm going to do the other two because I already have it set. So I might as well just cut them all at the same time and make them all at the same time. And that's kind of how I do it. Um, assembly line. And that's kind of what my video here is about on how you make multiples. Um, and of course, when I would, normally when I would make five, I would, you know, just do five at a time or whatever. But I wasn't going to finish these two because I was doing something else. But then I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. So this is to make my envelopes. And they're all the same size. They're perfect. Of course, I'm going to save these. And I have a save scrap pile over here. And of course, and I, I think I've said if y'all haven't gotten one of these, you should, this is one of these things that I think are well worth it. Okay. All right. So what it says is I have to put it on score line four, which is over here. So you only have to measure one time. So it told me, I don't know if you can see this, for my... Um, five by six and a half envelope i had to cut my paper size nine and a quarter nine and a quarter and then it says score line four okay so that's where that's how it tells me where to put my score line so there's my score line so i put it right there 
and what I will do is there's a little uh, notch thing here to kind of help you line up your um, score tool and I just score it and punch okay so you only measure the one time and then the next time all you're going to do is turn it here's your score line here you're going to line up your score line right there so where this little pointy thing comes it should it should I don't know it's hard to see sometimes on colored paper that should be right on your score line so you're not measuring a second time you're not measuring anything you only measure the one time oh, and then you do you can punch and score score and punch it doesn't matter it's gonna do the same thing so then you're gonna go like that and punch then you're gonna line up your score line again on your little pointy thing should be right on your score line this fits right in that groove thing to help you get it straight punch and then do it again once you do one or two of these it's super easy so okay so there is our envelope now what I you do now is it has on the other side it has a little um, punch tool or, or a rounding tool which you could actually use this if you wanted to if you didn't have a, 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 a corner punch okay anyway there we go so that's it and then you just basically now I'm not going to put this together because when you put it in the middle of your signature you want it not put together so but anyway let me show you how it would look okay and that is your envelope so when you put it in your um, when you put it in your uh, book you're going to have it open and on the bottom and then sew it in and then you're going to go ahead and go like this so that way this will stay open and you'll be able to insert things in and out or actually like this okay so anyway I have three more to make I'm going to do that real quick and then we will have these ready for our um, to put in our signatures when we get ready to do that okay so I'm doing everything the same I'm making them the same they're just a different color when I ever do these um whenever I do the uh, little golden books if you're doing multiples the best way to do it is just kind of have a system I think uh, what you add in most and of course the papers will be different I mean I try and get them to uh, kind of match not match or go with um, either the theme or the colors or whatever and uh, the book and a lot of times your little golden books are they have little brighter colors in them so I kind of like it because I get to use some of these papers that I bought I mean I could buy a paper kit or something for it but I do really want to try and use some of the stuff I already have and this stuff it, this usually works well for it I think and of course I like the lighter weight paper I remember when I was doing scrapbooking of course you always like the heavy paper and now I've got a lot of that sitting around that I don't use so but I don't think that was in all the way there we go all right so you just put this in and round them all I hope everyone is having a good day I am having a wonderful day um, got to spend a lot of time crafting today which is always fun for me so that's just a perfect day for me when I get to do that it's kind of funny as I just don't get burnt out at all you know some people will say that and I mean I I mean not gonna say I never get burnt out or I do I, that's probably one of the reasons why I don't really go out of my way to sell my journals because that is really the only time I get burnout is when I'm trying to get so much done and I have all these obligations 
you know, of getting them done and that kind of thing. And I just, it gets to be a lot. I mean, I think I probably am going to start selling them, but I think I'm just going to make them and list them. And if they sell, they sell. If they don't, they don't. They'll just be in my giveaway because... I have done crafting for a long time and I've sold things and I don't mind doing it but what happens is if you start doing a lot and you try and make a lot um, in the production it's, you get burnt out so you're only one person and you know I just don't want to be obligated to do it if I get it done I get it done and then that's one reason why when I did do different crafts and I went to craft shows, even though it wasn't like a custom order, you still had to have enough to make it worth your while to go. And I just felt like I was constantly having to make things in, you know, large quantities just to keep up. And I, and I did a good job. I mean, I sold a lot of what I made, but it just got to be where... It became more of a production line and not really, you know, an art project or something that I enjoyed. So I really, you know, try to stay away from that. And I do, I just, I, I just like to put my whole self into whatever I'm making and, you know, just really enjoy the process. And I don't enjoy the process if I'm, if I'm trying to do too much. But, so, long story short, that's why I didn't finish these with my other uh, little golden books that I made. But then I just looked in the room and I thought, you know, I'll finish those. It's not going to take me very much to do this. So, I do have a system in place and that's how I do it. Okay, so now I have my four envelopes and I'll put that back. And I will tell you... Um, I've got my money. I bought this at Tuesday morning, so it was discounted. I mean, I have a lot of different um, items that I bought there, and you definitely, you know, okay, so I gotta remember which ones went where. Pretty sure that that went there and that went there. Okay, so I'm gonna put that over here with these. So we have two sets. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my other pieces of paper for both my books. And I'll do one set at a time so I can keep them together. As you can see, when I pick out my papers, I just keep them all clipped together. So all of these are going to go in one book and then there will be some. But since these are um, the 12 by 12 paper, I'll cut all of those the size I need all at the same time so okay so what I'm gonna do is really the only thing that we have to measure on this is the length and I'm gonna cut these the same as my um, little golden books height which is a little bit let me get that on there straight I had this marked at one time and I don't remember why I didn't keep it that way. Okay, so it's I just put it butted up right there. So that's going to give me the same height as my little golden book. See, that's another reason why I love this. I don't think this is a Martha Stewart um, board. And it did have a little thing to score on here to put on here to use as a score, but I I don't know what I did with it, and we keep the little tool in here, but I don't know what I did with it. Somewhere it got lost, but I do use this all the time to cut. Okay, so this is going to be my height. So there's not really a clear pattern on all of these, so it's not really going to matter. And I'm going to I'm going to do two at a time that way. But these are in the way. Let me move those up here. I don't really need those right now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get those in there. And that's another thing. This lines them up really good. And 
I, there may be other ones out there that are like this, but this little tool, this part of it is amazing. Okay, so there, these pieces we're going to keep. Okay, and then get that in there straight. So what I'm going to do then is I mix, take these and I put them, because this is going to be going one signature, so it'll have four different ones, and I put those in there, these two short ones. And then I take these two and I put them in there. So all of these are going to go, these are two different signatures, and that's how it works. So now let's do that to separate it. Okay, so that goes there and there. I'll put a different paper clip on those just to keep those together. And since I am cutting my uh, 12 by 12 paper for the one book, now what I'll do is I will go ahead and I'll take my other 12 by 12 paper out. And this is from my, the other one that I'm going to do. And I will cut all of those. Put this back over here. And this kind of keeps it orderly and honestly, this is how I end up um, being able to do multiples, you know, at the same time. I hope I was in frame for some of that because, honestly, I wasn't really paying attention. Okay, so here we go again. these two are going to go with the other two pieces because remember we're kind of mixing them up a little bit and then these two will go with those and that is going to work for because this see this will fold over that will be a page right there or two pages really See, so that'll go there, and then the small ones we will use also, smaller ones, and they'll go in there too, so I'll do a better job of folding that, okay? But anyway, that's what's going to happen with those, okay? So we'll put those over here, all right? So then we have our other papers, and I will get light kinds together. Get these envelopes off of there. Get these out of the way. Those out of the way. Those out of the way. Okay, so these are all our other papers that we have, and all of these width-wise, okay, obviously are going to be fine because that's going to be the width, right? So, because um, our, our papers are, I don't remember what the width was on it, but there are, you can tell just by looking at this here, this would be, yeah, they're like um, six and three quarters, okay? So, Obviously, the width on this is fine. It's the height. So all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut the height on these. So the way I do that is obviously I just take these in there, decide what you want cut off. And I'm going to go ahead and cut off the holes on these. And you just basically do the same thing that you did on all the others. And of course, you can put multiples in there, and I should have done that, but... And put those in there. Let's take these. Sometimes it's not worth cutting multiples because then you're like, you know, um, 
Oh, okay, I don't know why that... Oh, I guess it's, it got torn differently or something. So I'll just do that. They're not in there straight. Okay, let me try this again. I don't know why these are not the same. That's just really weird. Okay, anyway, it'll still work. The width isn't going to really matter. Okay, so that's good. And then I've got um, these over here. How many of those do I have? Let's see. Those. Get them all in there straight. And that's one thing too. This will easily cut four or five pieces so you're not stuck with, you know, there's several pieces of vellum in here. And I'm going to put those here and get that lined up so it's nice and square. Right? What is going on there? Okay, there we go. Got it in there good now. Okay, so that's those. And then I've got a couple pieces of parchment. I'll put that in there. Okay. Now I do have some other coffee dyed paper, and I'm going to cut that later because I have to iron those a little bit. But I'm going to put that up here. And so now that I've done that, I'll take my other stack. And I'll take all those papers that are similar. And I'm leaving the composition paper out, and you'll see why in a minute. But all these other papers, we're going to do basically the same thing. And I'm keeping my stacks together, so, so they're all kind of in the same boat. Where we're cutting them down. And you can see by doing it this way, you can really um, turn out quite a few um, books all at one time. So, I should have left that where the holes are on there. Oh well, that's okay. Anyway, I do this, and then when I get to the end, oh, I just have one more piece of it's a vellum. Put that in there. And then these are all the same, so I'll put those in here. All right. So I have all those. So that's my other papers. And again, they'll go in half like that. So those go there. Now I'm going to work on my, um, my composition paper. And because, let me show you how these work. These are going to be... A little bit different. Height-wise, of course, they'll be the same. Let me get these all. I think I'll do two at a time, just so they don't come undone. And I usually leave this top part on here and then cut the bottom. And I usually end up rounding them again, just so. Well, let me see here. Okay, so now maybe I'll just do one at a time so it doesn't move around. Okay, so we're going to do all of these. And save these pieces because I use those for things later. I'll show you at some point. Anyway, let's do a couple of those. 
as I can get them in. I don't like to do too many because then they can come out crooked. I don't like that. Like, see, right now they're not lining up. They just kind of move around because they're already folded. So that's why I don't like to do multiples of these. All right, get in there. There we go. All right. Make sure we don't do the wrong side. So I do that for all of these, and then I'm going to have to do the width because these are actually wider than the little golden book pages, and I don't want them wider. And if you notice, like, okay, so my 12 by 12 paper is not as wide, and the other papers I cut before were not as wide, but these are going to be, and you do want varying lengths in your book. Um, with um, heights and, and widths. So anyway, so this is where we're going to take our little golden book and I'm going to take this and I just butt it up against there and make sure it's right and lock it in and that gets me the perfect height or width, I'm sorry. So then I'll just go in and put all of those in there and do that. So then that'll be perfect. So, go through all of those. Do that all the way through. I know this isn't exciting, but I have people when I did my other um, tutorial, they ask me how I got my papers ready and da 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 da. Because I kind of skipped that part because I thought it was kind of boring. But I do realize that if you're new to uh, journaling, to doing uh, junk journaling, um, that part's important and, you know, that's part of the process. And, you know, I guess it's probably hard to skip over that. So let me get something real quick, guys, and I'll be right back. thing I dyed these papers and I'm telling you they turned out really weird on some I'm gonna get I'm gonna get um, one two and then I was gonna iron these but I think I'm just gonna cut them in three four See if I can find four that are halfway straight. One, two, let's see, three, four. And I did that because I wanted kind of these colors in there. And I usually when I do these, I did this with um, food coloring. I mainly use them just for little golden books. I mean that's really only all I use them for, but three. Four. Let's see if I have four pink ones all right. I didn't do a great job with these. I don't know what, what I did, but I just maybe wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I'm not sure. I may not have four. One, two, three. I see one more pink one. Let's see, that's messed up. I don't think that's messed up. I don't think I have another pink one to use. Okay, well, I'll just use, I'll just use two pink ones then, and this one's messed up anyway. Okay. All right, guys. I don't know if I, if I messed up that too much. Anyway, on these, I always do, for my little golden books, I always make these, um,
um, legal size so that these, remember I told you you want the varying width and everything? And the reason I do that is just because of the fact that, you know, obviously um, it can be the full size of the paper. If you do it the, um, the A5 size or whatever, you're going to end up with, you know, the shorter ones. So that way you get, you know, you're going to have a lot of shorter pieces or shorter widths in there. And then you'll have um, whatever. Uh, shoot what was I going to say um, you'll have um, the longer ones too so this way it gives you more more uh, varying papers I'm trying to think maybe I'll just do two of one in each signature I'm not going to have enough of the pink okay I'm just going to cut these all down and I'll, I wish I had another couple more pink ones but I don't so Okay, so on this, for the length, I take my little golden book, and I have it marked on here, but I'll show you. You're just going to take this, and you're going to figure out what length you need it. Oops. I'm not sorry. Here we go. Which is longer than what this is going to go to, so... Let me see. How did I do that? Where's my pencil? So I pretty well, let me get this marked down a little bit. Okay. I marked it to where I want to cut it and Here. This is the reason I number my pages too, because when I take them and play with them like that, they get out of order. I mean, you can put them back in order, you just have to read the whole story, right? Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off that sliver on there. Well, maybe I didn't do it enough. Okay. And then I'm going to take this and hopefully this will be the right size. Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. So anyway, then what I do is I will go ahead and put these in there because this is too large for that. Let me get that in there good. And I kind of trying to remember how much this was. I had it marked, I think it's like a quarter of an inch. So you basically I'm going to mark, get every one of these at the same, and you can do this and fold it in half, or you can do it, um, I don't remember how I did it, I'm trying to remember how I did it, I'm pretty sure I did not mark all these, let me think, or did I fold them in half, I don't think I marked all these, I think I folded them in half is what I did. So let's try that. I think I folded them in half, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's what I did. That's how I did it. I was trying to remember how I did it last time because I don't remember marking each one of them. So I think what I did is I folded them in half. then I just trimmed them. That is what I did. So that's what I did. Okay. So we're still going to have to do the height, but we'll do them all at one time. Anyway, that'll fold them. You get them the way you want them. I was trying to remember. I knew I did these before. 
in kind of an assembly line fashion, but get those perfect. So there. So anyway, this is tedious, but oh well. You know, what are you going to do? You want to line them up good so they're nice and straight. But I do like the um, color. And then the really good thing is that then you'll have these pages in there that'll be the same as those. And um, you'll have your composition in that era. And then you'll have all your other papers that the width is... Um, shorter so it really gives it some nice variance and you know. and then I do that a lot on my um, coffee dyeing I do the uh, legal size just because you know if you want your papers to be the same width as some of your other pages it works really well And when I do these, I do around anywhere from 15 to 20 pages per signature. Um, and on my little golden books, I did decorate quite a few of them at Christmas. That's really what killed me was the decorating. And then I got to the point where I realized uh, most people kind of want to decorate their own. So... I, you know, I add in a lot of extra papers, a lot of other things, and I let people do it themselves, and I actually, I think people actually liked it better, so I kind of made up to where I really don't decorate them very much, so, because I just think people actually want them that way, so, and if you're making quite a few, that's the way to go. Anyway, this is my assembly line process. Um, and I usually, when I'm doing my little golden books, I usually work on about at least four at a time sometimes because it just seems like it's easy to do. And when I first started doing them, um, I did sew the buttons in and things because I thought, oh my god. But after I did like a couple, I went, it's really not hard. Um, but I do have some people that have asked me about this process, part of it. Because like I said, if you go back and look at my tutorial on how, to, how I do my little golden books, um, I kind of left all this out. And a lot of it is this part. As, one, as far as making journals go, this is the part I really don't enjoy. I don't, I like gathering the papers and figuring out what I'm going to use, but I don't like cutting all the papers down. That's the part that drives me nuts because it's so tedious and so repetitive. Um, I just, it really does drive me crazy, but oh well. You know, it is the process, so what are you going to do? Not a lot you can do about it. You can't really skip that part, but um, you know, there's different parts people like, people dislike. Y'all let me know what you like or dislike if you like doing this, because I don't know. I used to hate sewing in the signatures because I wasn't very good at it. It was hard for me, and I, now that's one of my favorite parts because, you know, I don't know. That's not, that's really not hard. I have a hard time when I'm doing it on camera for some reason. It's like that's the only time that I ever have issues or any problems when I'm doing it on camera. But, um, yeah. I think that's because when I first started doing it, I said I put in a couple signatures. Um, like I put the, the second signature in in the front or I do one upside down or oh my god. 
you know, and I'd be done and go, oh, well, I did it great. It looks great. It's nice and tight. Everything's wonderful. And then I'd go look at it and go, oh, my God, I'm going to bed, you know, because it would happen. You know, it was just messed up. All right, here's the last one. And then we have to do the price on these. And like I said, the only time I really use these kind of bright colors like this is I usually use them in Little Golden Books because most of Little Golden Books have these really neat colors in them. And so anyway, so I'm going to do that and I probably, let's see what we're going to do with that. So height-wise, we're doing do this again. I can't remember the measurement. That's why I keep this close and keep that right here. I'm telling you, I love this thing. It's just so great, especially when you're doing multiples. So I don't know if there's another one out there like this that you can get, but um, you know, it's just, I don't know. And I didn't I had this for a long time and I didn't use it. Um, I think it was on sale or something and I bought it and, you know, when I, this is back when I was doing scrapbooking and you really didn't, you know, when you're doing scrapbooking, you didn't do repetitive cutting and paper, you know, I mean, not a lot of it. So I didn't really see the value in this. And now it's like, wow, this is great. So, anyway, this is kind of my go-to when I'm getting my papers together. And it does save me a tremendous amount of time. Um, and it's great because it, you know, really helps you get your paper straight too. Because you're basically, you know, butting it up here and here. And, it, you know, as long as you're not holding it crooked it's it's gonna cut straight and it's great and, you know as you can see you can do one after another get it right in there it's just a lot easier than you know relining it up and measuring it every time and so I don't know I I guess I can go out there and look and see if there's anything like this, but it was a Martha Stewart one, and I'm, I looked, and I couldn't find them anymore, so, um, and I know a lot of people have their favorite cutters, and if you have one, let me know, and I'll put that out there so people, I can share it with people, and um, just put it in the comments and people can see, because I know people have asked me. All right, so anyway, that is it. That is all the cutting that we need to do. Let me see what the time it is right now. So um, we've got a couple minutes. I'm just gonna kind of show people. I'm not gonna have time, obviously, to put it so in the signatures. See, that'd be make cool grass for your um, Easter basket, wouldn't it? Okay, so I'm gonna give you an idea of what I do when I in my signatures so uh, let's just take one of these books now and let's see this is page one that's page seven these are two different books so okay there we go which one does that go to I can't tell I think the illustrations are the same so this is going to be interesting which one goes to what? I cannot tell. Interesting. Oh well. I'll figure it out. Okay, so. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I can tell by the paper. I can tell by the paper. These two go together. Okay. So, anyway, what you would do is you take your pages like this. You've got all your other pages. So, this one is put this down that goes to this book and so that is those are these papers right here okay and I'm going to take all of these over here and get them ready 
so I'm going to take my first signature and I'm going to take the pages apart. I still leave them numbered. I, I leave it numbered until it's sewn in. I mean, I don't unnumber them. So you're really just going to have three pages of the actual um, book. Okay? So, now, we're not using all of these. So I put one there. One, two. And I don't know. I may not. You know what? I think I may just put one of okay, I may just put one of each in there just put different colors on different sides right and then we'll have okay one extra three four and five okay so we'll do that for the next one you know, I'll just save these for something else because I just I don't know if I'm gonna have enough room for all that. One, two, three, four. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I take my different papers, put that up here, different kinds of paper, and I kind of put them in little stacks. Those are gonna go there. These are my other papers. I know you can't see how I have them all fanned out here. And this is what I call my kind of different papers and I'll keep those over here. All right, that's one of these pages. These are my envelopes that go in the middle that goes in my kind of different stack. So then I just will start thinking where do I want these, okay? Now I know that and a lot of it too is I'll look at this and think, okay, what do I want to be next to this, okay? And I really like this paper right here, so maybe I'll fold that in half. And I'll put that like maybe right here. But I may want like a bigger piece in front. So let's see. No blue in that. So maybe we'll take this pink and I'll put the pink right there. Okay, so I've got that there. So maybe I want um, a piece of vellum or something in there, or parchment paper, a shorter piece. So I can put that there. Okay, so basically what you're trying to do is you're varying your widths and your colors. And I, part of my, my process in my mind is I'm varying the colors too. See like, so this one I could put right there and then maybe I wanna put that there, okay? And then maybe I wanna put, um, I've got these little cards here, so maybe I wanna put a card in there, okay? Um, so then maybe at that point I think well I might want to put um, another page in there because I've got several pages so I'll take a page and make sure so that's why you have numbered you have one there and number two there so then you're going okay so maybe I want um, another uh, piece of this paper and then maybe I want this paper right so, and I do that all the way through until I get to the point where I kind of know, you know, what I want, where I want it. You know, I think I'm going to put a doily right here. And I actually go in, and these other smaller pieces usually I put in later. I put my pages in first, but I just for some reason thought I would do that. And so let's say I want to put this page in here. And I try and vary the color and vary the size and the height to go in here. Um, I always like to put vellum. Now see I have two the same right here. So maybe I want to take that out and put that in here. Okay. And then maybe I would like to say okay. Um, 
I could have put that right here. So as I'm going through, I'm trying to vary the height in all of the um, width. Usually I put my vellum next to a colored piece like a, or a uh, page. So I might put that right there. Okay. So we've got quite a few pieces there. I probably want a shorter piece in here too. And I'm only going to, now what I will try and do is whatever I put up front, I'll put something different. I don't want the, I don't want the same pattern. So I want to bury my patterns. I like things to go together, but not match. That's kind of my thing. Where did I fold that crooked? Okay. So let's say we put that in there. And then let's see. Um... We've got a card in there already. We have a doily. Uh, let's say maybe we want a paper bag, but I'm not going to put that yet. I think how many pieces have I put of those in there? I've got two of those. I probably need to put one of these in there. I have not done that. So I'll put that in there. And see, that changes the color, too. So then maybe I want to put this bag in there. And I probably need to cut that. So I'll take my bag. And, oops, get out of there. And I'll cut that right there. And I will eventually put a notch in there, but I'm not going to do it right away. Alright, so we fold that in half. And we'll put that in there, okay? Um, you know what, though? I think I put... See, and this is what I'll think. I put that in there, and it's kind of the same. So I may take this other card that is not like that, and I'm going to put that, not the brown paper, and I'll put this there instead because I, I want to vary it up. And then, let's see... I don't have any parchment paper in there, I don't think. Do I? Nope, I don't. Okay, so I'll put some parchment paper in there. Just to make it a little different. And then, I think from there... Let's see what I have not put in there yet. I think we're good. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just put my envelope in the middle. And that's going to go there. Like I said, we'll, we'll put that in and then we'll fold it up later and that's how it'll go. So this is an idea. Oh, we have one more page though. I think we have another page, don't we? Or did we put all of them in? Making kind of a mess. Did I put the other page in? I don't think I did. I'm missing a page. Page three. Where did page three go? It kind of disappeared. So, huh. Did it fall? I don't know where page three went, but it should be in here somewhere. I'm sure it is. That's page seven. I think somewhere in here it got buried. Is it up here? No, that's just those. I know it's under here because I saw it a minute ago. Well, anyway. What you would do then is if you had page three, you'd put that probably somewhere in here that I did not do. This is page two. Hmm. I don't know. We hope we don't lose page three. It'll show up. I saw it a minute ago. It'll show up. Anyway, so you guys get the gist. What you're going to do is you're just going to take all these and you're going to insert your pages somewhere in there. There's page no, that's page two. I wonder where page three went to. I've got to find page three, guys, somewhere. Anyway, you bury your pages in there. Here, I'll find page three on the other one so you can see it. It's got to be here. This is page seven. That's page one. That is just so weird. It's going to drive me crazy. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, so here's page three. And so, let's say we had put page three right about here. Okay, so that's three. And what will happen is, 
all your pages. And here's your envelope. Here, I'm going to kind of fold this so you guys can get the idea of how it works. Okay, so then this is basically your signature. Okay, and let's see how many, I'm guessing how many pages are in here. One, two, there's page one, three, four, and then we'll move that up toward the middle, but we'll do that later. Four, I don't count those. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So that's eighteen pages. So that's pretty good um, if you count the other little things. So it's about twenty pages. So that's perfect. So that is a signature. And then all you do is you take your um, page uh, 7 through 12 and you do basically the same thing. You open up page 7 and you put things in it and then the next one and it, it works out perfect. So anyway, that's how you get your signatures together. Um, and then uh, my next video, I'll sew them in again and put them in there and you guys can see that. But anyway, I did leave this part out of my process video when I did my other little golden book. So I did have people asking questions. So this is how I do it. And um, that's how I get my signatures together. That's, it's that simple. Okay. So you guys have a wonderful day and join me again soon. And don't forget about Giveaway Fridays. All you have to do is be a subscriber and um, make a comment during the week and your name is entered in. And on Fridays, I uh, have giveaways. It's usually journals or uh, part of my stash or whatever. And I'll pay up to $10 shipping. And every week, um, I start over again. So, and you can watch it. You can be an old video, new video, doesn't matter. Just whatever. Um, videos you watch during the week. If you just like and comment, then I, uh, you, uh, you, I enter you in. Okay. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day and I'll see you again soon.